two forms of sun dancing out here, and uh, Jim's role in the uh, first part of the sun dance that we'll do uh, will be as a pledger, as a sun dancer. We'll be sun dancers together. And in this ceremony, uh, both of our chests will be pierced and attached to a rope to this cottonwood tree, and we will both dance against these uh, piercings until we break the skin free. This is, at the same time, the most extraordinary and the most painful experience I've ever watched. They've been ripping flesh now for more than two hours. And the flesh comes out from the body three or four inches and still it won't break. They could probably break free in a matter of minutes if they pulled hard. But they're doing this ceremonially and by just ripping the flesh ever so slowly over hours and hours, they build up the natural opiates in their body, which will help Fakir get ready for the next step, which is hanging from his pecs. I'm going to go then and do another form of sun dancing, a more extreme form, where I'm actually wound up into one of these trees from a branch. And Jim's role in this will be Kasika. He will be the operator. He will be the man in charge of this ceremony to get me up there, because once you surrender to the experience, you just have to let yourself go. He is in charge of my life. If things go wrong or anything, I mean, you know, it's pretty much up to Jim to see that um, all the mechanical things, and he has to be with me in spirit, are done properly. Otherwise, there is a risk that you could die. I mean, there, you could be very seriously injured or die. And we're going to be way out here, uh, 70 miles maybe from the nearest civilization. So if anything goes wrong, why, we're in a bad way. But we don't think about things like that because the Great White Spirit is in charge of this ceremony. And if we're lucky, we'll meet the Great White Spirit.
I was up there with the creators of the universe. It was a dimension that I don't think I've ever been in before with that. Uh, it was just, uh, it, well, I don't know how you say it, I guess it was cosmic or something. Boy, I've never been up in that kind of a level. I mean, you know, there are gods and demigods and great white lights and the great white spirit, but this was way up there. The white spirit or whatever it was the one that sucked me up right through and into the physical sun and out here somewhere. And uh, they were speaking, you know, there was there was music of a, of a sort. It was magnificent stuff. And... Uh, they told me things. And they're blowing on eagle bone whistles. They have sage wreaths around their arms, head, and ankles. They have eagle feathers pinned into their skin. And they pull until the skin breaks loose. It's called ripping flesh. And it took three hours, slowly getting into a trance, building up the natural opiates in the body, flooding the body with natural opiates to get ready for the next cer part of the ceremony which was hanging, this is the real Sioux Indian sun dance where you hang, usually either from your back or from your chest. And at this point, you can't physically do this without leaving your body, without actually having an out of the body experience and hanging around with the energies upstairs. He did this for 20 minutes. And I spoke with him when, when he came down, his eyes were alight, he was so excited. He said it was like going up and running around with a heard of thundering horses. The energy was so powerful and so strong. He looked around the site and he said, we chose a good site. It was, a, it was done right. And I always wanted to do this right. This does look pretty bizarre, but in the context that I presented it, maybe you get some idea of, of uh, what my latest work has been about and how I've gradually um, reached this point. And uh, I've been working with a man who claims that he leaves his body and talks to God. And, Think about that for a while, I certainly have. So I'd better stop and say thank you. <laughs>